Halloween. It's movie time. It is. Let's talk. Yeah. Halloween. Part seven. Yeah. Horror. Horror. <gasps> rubber. What are they saying? Rubber chicken. <laughs> I, I'm not Lewis. I don't have a rubber chicken. <laughs> I've got an alien. It seems sicker. Maybe this is one of the aliens that's got Dylan. Is it? I think they're telling you to look behind you. Okay, uh, let's talk. Horror is a lot like heavy metal. I say this. It is because. Can you hear let's. Me? Horror is a lot like heavy metal because. Why? Horror is. Uh, heavy metal, sorry, is always there. It never goes away. It's always just sitting there. And every once in a while, a heavy metal album crosses over and becomes a mainstream hit, and everyone goes, metal's back. And the horror, uh, heavy metal fans are like, it was always there, man. I was always into it. The other reason heavy metal is like horror is because only a true metal fan knows all the little subdivisions, black metal, blah, blah, blah. And the other reason it's like horror is because society generally views hardcore horror fans and hardcore heavy metal fans as a little nuts and cow, a little disturbed. And that's the problem with Halloween 7. It comes along after Scream, which was a huge hit, and now all the moneymakers are like, okay, let's do one of those Halloween films, yes. it'll be a hit like Scream. Yes. But all the horror fans who've been sticking through six films, well, not part three, because that was had nothing to do with Michael Myers. That was about a mask of the thing. But anyway, so five Michael Myers films, and all five. of a sudden, this movie comes along catering for people who are just walking in there for the first time. And the horror fans are like, I know all this stuff. They're taking ages setting up Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee's character from the first one. All the horror fans, they've sat through five movies before horror was cool. They sat through all that, and then suddenly Scream comes out, and now they have to re-establish her character, for those who don't know. And they're sitting there bleeding. That's what's the problem with this. Let me tell you how a slasher film works generally. Okay, all right. Tell me how a this is how it generally works, works with the famous graph. You've got a bit of boring stuff, then a death, then another bit of boring stuff, and a death, then another bit of character, in, uh, character, boring stuff, boring stuff, maybe a bit of nookie, yeah. a death, and then it all goes to the end. Now, what Kevin Williamson did when he wrote Scream was all he did to make it a mega hit. What's that? A man who dies. Well, he's a man who dies. All Kevin Williamson did to make Scream good is. He made these bits in between the deaths interesting. He made them like 902 and 0. He put good dialogue. See, in the usual slasher films, these bits are all crap and it's like, hurry up on the fast forward bit and kill. And then, uh, so Kevin Williamson made these bits interesting. Boom, horror goes through the roof. H2O takes us back 10 years. All these bits are boring again. You're sitting there going, what's going on? It's taking us back to the 80s. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a horror fan, I was sitting there and I was very disappointed that it could have done more. The script was just appalling. As I said, those little bits were boring. And unfortunately, Halloween doesn't make the grade. Let's have a look at it. Yo.